Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Berlakis, and this is case 216 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating a stain that occurred during CTO crossing attempts. The patient presented with refractory angina due to a single vessel disease with a coronary artery CTO. The RCA had a blunt and ambiguous proximal cap at the takeoff of a large acute marginal. And the distal vessel was filling uh, via septal collaterals as a PDA, a secondary PDA, and the right posterior lateral. So essentially, we have a CTO with a blunt, semi ambiguous proximal cap, length of about uh, 30 to 40 millimeters, and a diffuse disease distal vessel with a bifurcation close to the distal cap, as well as septal collaterals supplying the PDA. So based on this, our initial plan was to perform IVUS guided puncture of the proximal cap. If that didn't work, to try to go retrograde to the septals. And if that didn't work, to do undergrade dissection or re-entry. We advanced the guide wire into the marginal, but we could not deliver an IVUS into the side branch. And as a result, we decided to switch uh, to retrograde crossing. This is a turnpike LP with a C on black guide wire. And uh, doing surfing we were able to direct uh, this wire um, all the way into the PDA. It took a while, it's a serpiginous course, but the wire seems to go in the right place. And of course, we need to confirm that we're in the right, in the right place. So we did the injection. And sure enough, our guide wire is uh, through this collateral into the so-called second septal and close to the distal cap. The problem we had, however, and this is something not uncommon when going through small septal collaterals, was that we were unable to deliver the microcatheter. The turnpike LP would not go. We switched for a caravel. We put in a six friends uh, guideliner cost, but still were unable to cross through this lesion. So what to do next? Uh, another option would have been to take a small 1.0 to 1.5 balloon and perform dilation, but... Since there was another bigger septal further distal, we decided to go for that one. So we switched uh, for crossing through the second septal. This is, uh, again, a C on black guide wire. And uh, fairly easily, uh, the wire actually successfully crossed through that uh, branch in what seems to be the course of the vessel. Once again, we confirmed that this was the true vessel. And here is the injection after we delivered the caravel. There was no problem this time. And we see that we are through this secondary PDA and we're injecting into the distal RCA that is of small caliber. So what to do next? Uh, we took a Gaia second guide wire and advanced retrograde and we were able to knuckle it and that seems to advance along the course of the vessel. And after doing that, we were then able to use that retrograde as a marker for our undergrade equipment. So we advanced the guy next to undergrade, and then we were able to deliver an undergrade seven French guideliner coast, and then did the guide extension reverse cart, and we did have a fairly easy crossing with a retrograde Gaia into the undergrade guide extension. We externalized, this was an R350, and then we decided to start stenting. We did an IVUS that demonstrated we were extra plaque for only a short segment of the vessel, and uh, this is a long 3.0 by 48 millimeter synergy stand. We tried to park this proximal to the distal touchdown. And uh, we did a few injections to confirm that the location was favorable. We deployed the stand. And this is what we saw. And obviously, this is quite frustrating when we have a poor flow after putting a stand in. But uh, looking at this more carefully, we thought that there was probably some dissection further distal to the distal edge of the stand. So what we do here, we do have some filling into the right posterior lateral. And the plan here was to try to advance another wire. So we did use uh, a Sasuke, that's a dual lumen microcatheter. We did have a little hard time in advancing the wire through and actually look at the way this wire is looping, that would become important when we look at the next picture. So the wires seem to loop. Uh, we tried to redirect it in uh, multiple directions. 
we pulled it back and again it will enter the vessel but then we had difficulty advancing it up until eventually the wire went further down and after doing that this is what we saw so this is good news and bad news the good news are that now we do have much better flow into the posterior lateral and the RCA in general but the bad news is that we now have a stain so we have this staining and this likely represents a distal vessel perforation likely it was from the seam black wire when we were trying to wire into the right posterior lateral so what to do about this well like everything else the first step was to place a balloon in the branch that stopped the flow and then we decided to do intravascular ultrasound to see where we went and uh, it did show that we were uh, into the turdum proximal. this is the um, wire that goes into the side branch and then when we come more proximal we do have the stent that seems to be well expanded so this is not an issue inside the stent but this is distal to the stent so we did prolonged balloon inflations and then did repeat injection unfortunately the stain was still there we also called for intravascular ultrasound but there was no pericardial effusion so what to do next um, after a lot of deliberation since this did not seem to be getting better we decided to potentially close it using a coil so how to do this we have the so-called block and deliver technique so we have a balloon that stops bleeding into this branch and then we've jailed a fine cross that is advanced essentially all the way to the origin of this vessel but it was actually difficult getting into this particular perforated vessel and our concern was that delivering coils or fat would potentially lead to loss of this last posterior lateral moreover after prolonged inflations the stains to be much more stable so we decided to just stand the proximal vessel put another long drag eluting stand and then uh, there was still slight staining but at this point, there was still no pericardial infusion of the echo, and we decided to just uh, proceed with uh, reversal. But uh, to do the reversal, what we need to do first is to remove the equipment from the vessel. So this is after removing the wire and the balloons. We gave 30 milligrams of protamine, and we have nice hemostasis without uh, uh, continued uh, extravasation into the vessel. So there are several lessons from this particular case. The first one is that when we have an uncrossable collateral, then one option is to try a different microcatheter, try more support using a guide extension. But if everything fails, another option is to try another collateral, especially if there are more than one collaterals, as was the case in this patient. The second thing is the troubleshooting if there is a poor flow after the CT or steading. If this is the case, check the outflow. In our case, there was likely some dissection distal to the stand that was treated with balloon angioplasty. We rewire the posterior lateral with a dual lumen, microcatheter, and a polymer jacketed wire, but the polymer jacketed wire caused a small vessel perforation. Prolonged balloon inflation seemed to improve it. There was no pericardial infusion, and we even decided to almost place a coil but we had difficulty getting into the perforated branch so eventually we removed the equipment and then we gave protamine and that resulted in sealing of the perforation and the patient actually had an antivetful post procedural course so to summarize some of the small distal vessel perforations do not need necessarily a coil or fat but they can potentially be treated by placing a a balloon and then after removing the balloons and wires and all the equipment for the coronary except for the guide administer protamine and that was successful in our case thank you